Good morning. This is the worst shirt in the history of the world. Okay, so week three. Today is Genesis 3. Oh, where's my book? I almost forget every day. Okay, January 10th. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Genesis 3, 9. Philosophers and theologians for centuries have debated this fascinating question, Adam, where art thou? How, they ask, could an all-wise, all-knowing deity pose such a question? Did the Father of heaven and earth not know where Adam and Eve were, or is the query more <sighs> merely rhetorical? Yet there is profound meaning in the question. In the first place, God was calling for an accounting from our first parents, an explanation for what they had done and where they now stood before him. In like fashion, God calls to each one of us by name. Where art thou, Bill? Where are, where are you going, Elizabeth? In short, where are we in regard to where we ought to be? The answer is essential to our pro to our progress in returning home. <gasps> Food for thought. Okay, so Genesis 3. Um, this week is the fall of Adam and Eve. And um, in reading 3, the shirt is the most... Oh my gosh, I hate this shirt. for now um in reading three i could notice that from what i know about the story some things are definitely missing in here um definitely missing if we just take you know, our brief experience of what happens in the temple and compare it with this. There's, this is like cliff notes. You're like, uh, feel like, feel like there's something missing here, but, uh, we'll get into that in a second. So the thing that I found, the only thing I found was truth. And they talk about this in the podcast. I almost didn't make it through the podcast this week, but they talk about this in the podcast. It's verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou, wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And the guest is talking about the first great truth. Um, God here is teaching Adam and Eve the first great truth of mortality. From the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat thy bread. Meaning, you are going to work. You can't get nothing, something for nothing. Work, work, work. Work, work, work. Work. <laughs> um, and then when it goes into the story of Cain and Abel, he says that um, Satan tells the first great lie. You can get something from nothing. Anyways, um, so that's, that's my little, what I found in my own reading. Now let's jump over to Ludlow. And he says, the Joseph Smith translation change, the Joseph Smith translation changes in this chapter are so numerous and significant that the version should be compared verse by verse. Okay, so... If we get into Moses, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, so we get into um, Moses chapter 4 on Thursday. I'm not going to compare them verse by verse. Um, uh, but let's just pick here and there some things. So in verse 16, um, the God is talking to Adam and Eve and 
he says, Eve, what have you done? And she goes, the serpent beguiled me. And he goes, because you did this thing, Adam will now rule over you. Some people may have an issue with that. Spencer W. Kimball says, And unto the woman the voice of the Lord was saying, In sorrow, or pain, or distress, or waiting, thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Or, I like the term, preside over thee. So not necessarily rule or unrighteous dominion, but just, he's going to preside. Um, uh, okay, so, uh, the fall of Adam and Eve is one of the most misunderstood events that has been recorded in the scriptures. Most Christians have been taught that the fall was an evil, unnecessary act, and Adam and Eve became eternally damned because of their actions. The same Felicious reasoning says that every child born on earth inherits and thus is, in a sense, is responsible for the fall of Adam and Eve. This error is followed by the teaching that everyone must be baptized in order to have the responsibility for the fall removed from them. An analysis of the status of Adam and Eve before and after the fall may help to clarify this matter. They talk about this in the podcast a lot about how the fall wasn't, the atonement wasn't the plan B for the fall. The fall was plan A. The atonement was plan A. Uh, A correct, a correct concept of the fall of Adam is necessary to, to an understanding of the basic claims of Christianity. The churches of the world, however, have largely lost sight of the essential differences in the status of Adam and Eve before and after the fall. The general conditions of Adam and Eve before the fall are listed on the left side of the chart, which follows. The corresponding general conditions of Adam and Eve after the fall are listed on the right side of the chart. So before the fall, they were in the presence of God. They were not mortal, that is, they were not subject to physical death. They were in a state of innocence, that is, they did not know the difference between good and evil, They would have had no children, Um, and then after the fall, they were cast out of the presence of God, that is, they suffered a spiritual death. They became mortal, subject to physical death. They knew good from evil. They had children. Thus, two major conclusions can be reached from these teachings. The fall was necessary in order for men to be, that is, in order for Adam and Eve to have children, A major purpose of man's existence is for him to have joy. True joy was not possible for Adam and Eve before the fall. These truths are stated clearly in 2 Nephi 2, verses 23 through 23. Uh, Yep, okay. So that's all um, that Ludlow has to offer. Um, Yeah. Uh, I suppose if I never went to the temple and never had a, a grander view of what the purpose of life, of, of the creation story of the fall of Adam and Eve, if, I'm, if I didn't have that, I suppose the Genesis account would suffice, but it is lacking some truths to where you would be like, oh, Eve was evil, uh, this is a... How you can um, be misdirected. How things can get mis... You know what I'm saying? I think you do. Okay. I have to go to work. I know it's Monday. I hate this shirt. I hate this shirt so much. It's this right here. Whatever this does. I hate. Okay. Genesis chapter 3. Love you all very much. See you tomorrow.